Hey everyone, it's Rob with Passport to the Parks and I am back from a very interesting situation that happened just a while ago. I'm sure most of you as you rejoin me here, uh, we're on the last stream. Uh, so I'll wait, uh, I'll wait a few to see if anybody else comes back on. Greg, welcome. Thank you for coming back. Uh, sorry I had to uh, abruptly end the, uh, the stream earlier. But uh, if you were with me earlier, we had uh, an incident on the bus heading over to Caribbean Beach here from Hollywood Studios where a very uh, intoxicated individual came on and was really giving me a hard time about um, using my camera on the bus. Um, so I subsequently lowered my camera to the floor and he was harassing me to stop filming and making threatening comments and doing all kinds of uh, inappropriate things. So. It was just uh, very, very um, uh, intimidating to be on there, so a little scary too. And so if you guys saw that, I do apologize for everything that happened. Uh, I wanted to respect you know, other people's wishes, so I lowered the camera to the ground. I, I, you know, if somebody doesn't want to be on camera, I try to respect that. I've actually put that video uh, in private right now. I'm gonna go back and probably edit it um, if I have to, uh, you know, cover over faces and things like that, or I just may just leave it private and just respect wishes of uh, people. Um, you know, you guys all know that I'm not here to cause any waves. I'm always respectful of people. I'm always uh, very nice to people and encourage people to be safe. So don't want to stir, uh, stir any water. Unfortunately, it was just a bad situation that he was trying to make uh, worse and worse as we went along. So uh, what else? I think that was it. Oh, and as I was getting off, uh, you guys heard the uh, the bus driver said that I handled it very appropriately and uh, that he actually watches my vlogs and I'm very respectful all the time. So I really appreciated him saying that. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Bus Driver, for uh, for saying that. that. That that made me feel a lot better. So uh, I am back here at Hollywood Studios. Let me turn you around real quick and uh, we'll take another look here. Matthew, thank you so much for the, uh, the super chat. Thank you for all you do, Rob. Have a Mickey ice cream bar on me. We'll be there Friday. I'll try to look you up. Absolutely, that'd be awesome. Uh, I'll definitely be out uh, vlogging on Friday. It's usually one of my days and I'm definitely here. So uh, kick me an email like uh, Thursday. We'll try to, to meet some, uh, you know, put something together where you're going to be and stuff like that. So it's Rob at PassportToTheParks.com. Uh, thank you guys all for coming back on here. Let me see. Uh, way too soon. Richard, David, C, Chris, Grace, Greg, the coaster enthusiast. Uh, Melissa Gray, thank you so much. Uh, WDW Princess, handled it like a pro. Thank you. Way too sun. Uh, you did nothing wrong. Mickey Sightings, good evening. Welcome. Uh, Richard Prescott wrote a poem about me just now. That is very, very cool. I'd love to uh, love to see that. Email it to me. Rob at Passport to the Parks. Yes, everybody thank Matthew. Thank you very, very much. And thank you again to Joe earlier and all those, those amazing super chats that came on during that whole situation earlier. Thank you very, very much for all your guys' support. That was really, really a, a very intimidating situation. I really thought that guy was gonna take a swing at me. Um, you know, I felt kind of threatened. He was right next to me, right up on top of me. So it was very, uh, very intimidating. So I'm sorry I had to, to take a little bit of a break to kind of compose myself and kind of come back from that. So. Marcy, hang in there, Rob. Thank you so much. Deb H., glad you're back. That dude at Disney. Hey, Rob, I'm here. Steven, uh, you just got in the wrong bus, mate. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have to worry about that. And I can understand, you know, somebody doesn't want to be on camera. I tried to be respectful and lower the camera. Um, but that, you know, he just wanted to continue on. And, you know, you guys heard him. He was right next to me, you know, saying all kinds of bad stuff. And so you just got to... Just kind of chill out until we get somewhere where you're safe, I guess. Dave C., thank you very, very much. Uh, you are such a good guy. Rob, the world needs more like you. Uh, 999 Super Chat, thank you so much, Dave. I really, really try to be as respectful as I can. I really do. Uh, if you guys watch my videos, you know that for a fact. Um, I respect everybody on Disney property, all the cast members, all the people that come here. Uh, I'm just here to have a good time and share that good time with everybody. You guys know that. See the BOMO, uh, all better now. Yeah, I think so. Just still a little shaken up, but you know, I wanted to come on and at least you know, talk to you guys a little bit more, let you know that everything's okay. Um, and again, I, I do have that video on private. Uh, you know, I want to respect wishes as, 
as uh, awful as he was being, um, you know, I'll go back and I'll take a look at it and see if there's anything that shouldn't be there. And, you know, if I need to blur things out or just leave it private altogether, I'm, I'm not here to, uh, to offend anybody, so. Crazy Domo, $24.99 Super Chat. Thank you very, very much, my friend. Thanks for being an upstanding guy, such an amazing role model. Well, I didn't think of myself ever as a role model, but thank you very, very much. I just try to uh, try to treat everybody like I would want to be treated. And that's all you pretty much have to do in life, I think. So these, these colors really stand out in the lights in here. Let me, oh, hold on a second. Sometimes my zoomer doesn't work very well. So the colors really stand out. It's like red, there's a, like that tealish blue, that bright yellow. I love that bright yellow compared to the mustard yellow one. Yeah, I'm trying to take a look at there right now, the, uh, who was asking, that dude at Disney. Uh, looks like there's probably about five, maybe six gondolas that they have unwrapped now. Dennis Z, no editing or blurring. <laughs> now, I, I do, I respect people, guys. I mean, I do, as, as much of a uh, uncomfortable situation he was making and as, uh, as threatening as he was being, you know, I, I respect that. Um, I felt even, I felt bad for the guy who stood up. You know, he was actually being cool with me, um, you know, talking about the Browns and stuff like that. But then, you know, he stood up, and that's when I really felt bad. And I said, you know, I'm going to take care of that. I, because of him, because of how respectful he was, I don't want him to feel, you know, bad in any way. So I'll, I'll take whatever I have to do for him, not, not the uh, guy that was threatening me on the bus. So... Frank, uh, what's blinking in the station? Those are just, uh, those are different warning lights they have. They have uh, green and red. Um, the, 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 the station, I can't even talk right now. The station is in stop, so you'll see the red lights. Um, so those actually turn green when the system is in go mode. And you'll, when they start the, uh, the gondolas up, you'll actually hear a, um, uh, an alarm sound. It's, again, it's another safety warning that warns people that, um, you know, the gondolas are gonna, are gonna start up. Last time. It's really cool to see it lit up, though. You know, I'm going to love when the, when the whole outside of the station is lit up as well. You know, I'm sure that they're going to have that neon effect. You know, you can see in the front entrance up there, those pillars right there, that's exactly what these are going to be right on top of the station here as well. So these will light up, and this will all match very, very nicely into everything they're doing in Hollywood Studios. You can see all around how everything just matches in perfectly here. Richard, you are a great pro, Rob. Thank you so much. Zippity doo dad, thank you for all the, uh, so the super chats, everybody. Absolutely, thank you, everybody, for these super chats. Dave C., there's a ton of super chats coming in here. Are these all? Oh, did you send uh, 4 dollars there, Dave? That's uh, that's very, very generous. All the, I don't know if these are uh, mistakes or what. Crazy Domo, $24.99. Crazy Domo again. Are you guys sending double ones or am I just, uh, is this just a glitch in my system? Thank you so very much for all these super chats. You guys are incredible. 20. 20. Can actually hear Phantasmic going on in the background. Everybody's coming out now. It was a very, very cold day. I'm actually really, really cold. My hands are cold. but it just looks great at night. I can't wait for this. And again, I was talking about in the last video, I am pretty much 99% sure, just because of all the progress they're doing, the things that I'm hearing you know, from the uh, different sources and stuff, are, this is really gonna be on track to be open prior to Galaxy's Edge. Um, you know, they're, they're, they wanna make a splash with this. Um, watch out for D23 too. You know, I don't want to say too much, but D23, there's going to be some pretty amazing announcements coming out of D23 um, as far as gondola systems, uh, other projects that may be happening on Disney property. So, you know, you're hearing it first, uh, hearing it here first, that Disney is definitely not done with uh, the plans that they're going to be making, uh, some of the things they're going to be doing with uh, not just the system, not just this D-line, not these 10 passenger gondolas, but we are going to see some pretty massive systems 
uh, coming through property. Um, and they're going to be coming to places that you may not assume would be part of a next phase. So we'll talk, uh, we'll talk more about it as we get uh, more towards D23, but I, I do assume that there's probably going to be some pretty, uh, pretty amazing announcements coming out of there. Crazy Domo, there are lights on the gondolas. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to be, if they are, they're very small LED lights. The Omega gondolas do have lighting uh, packages that come where they uh, they light up the outside, like the, the borders of the gondolas. They actually look really And again, we know there is power on the gondola. They'll definitely probably be lighting on the inside for safety reasons. The, there should be music, uh, but there definitely is power on board to, to handle all that. Could also very well be a possibility. I mean, I think it would look amazing, especially this view right here, coming out of Hollywood, and you see these gorgeous gondolas lit up uh, as they're coming towards you and leaving. I mean, just the, the effect that that would be would just be out of this world. Ski Dude Zero Two, ten dollars super chat. Thank you so much. Awesome coverage on the gondola testings. You are very, very welcome for that. Thank you for all the generous support. Thank you so much, guys. Especially earlier, and, and again, thank you for the support during that whole situation earlier. Um, it's kind of a scary thing. Um, you know, people start drinking and, you know, who knows what can happen. You know, you just kind of have to kind of roll with it and be respectful as possible. But uh, I appreciate all the support from that earlier as well. Oh, now we can see. So you can see Fantasmic down there. Even in these situations, just imagine, sorry, I didn't mean to stand in front of you there, sir. <laughs> you know, imagine you're coming in on these gondolas and you're taking the ride into Hollywood Studios and you're seeing the Star Wars fireworks or you're seeing Fantasmic. I mean, this is gonna be breathtaking stuff as you're coming in here. The views are gonna be out of this world. Literally, Galaxy's Edge, out of this world. Crazy Domo, I know you wanted a hug. Uh, I know you wanted to, oh, laugh at us too, yes. I was trying not to uh, laugh. I think if I would have done anything um, inappropriate in that guy's mind, he would have uh, he would have taken a swing at me. That's why you just uh, keep your head down, keep your mouth shut, and just wait till he gets off the bus. His wife, though, his wife was definitely in the background telling him to stop. She was embarrassed by him. See, Erica, uh, heading down at the end of May, looking forward to seeing all that is new from the past 13 years. Man, you got a lot of catching up from 13 years, I will definitely tell you that. Uh, but it's all great stuff, it's all fun. You're gonna have an amazing time, I promise. As I look down the line here, I'm sure you guys can see that actually. You can actually see it right, right there. You can actually see that yellow one really stands out in the crowd down there. So that's kind of neat. Imagine if it was lit up. And again, it's, it's very subtle. The, uh, the lighting packages, if indeed they do have it, it just outlines, you know, it's just coming down the trim of the gondolas, the ones that I've seen, just kind of outline, you know, it's not gaudy or anything. It would just be a very elegant lighting system. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. I've, I've looked pretty closely at these. If indeed they do have it, it's probably in the, you know, in the, the framework, um, just a very minor LED lighting of some sort. Uh, Deb, yes, nowadays you can't trust what people might do. Absolutely, that's what I was thinking too. That's, you hear these horror stories of, you know, people get angry and, you know, who knows? I, I don't want to be the, the person you see on the news because, um, you know, somebody's in a bad mood. William, I've seen fireworks from Splash Mountain, awesome, and illuminations from the monorail fireworks uh, from the gondolas would be great, absolutely. Even, uh, yeah, illuminations coming in to uh, International Gateway with illuminations going off, or what's it gonna be, uh, Legacy or Legends, or, I forget what they're gonna call it, but um, that'll be amazing coming in. You know, during the day, your, your really pretty views are obviously gonna be going over Hourglass Lake and they're gonna be going over like, um, over the uh, uh, Caribbean Beach. 
at night. I think this will be really, really pretty coming in here at night, especially with all these new bus stops lit up, all the beautiful neon and the, the really cool uh, Hollywood colors coming in here. Disney is all about the show. Safety first, but definitely show is part of it. Brian, RBS are the ones that are uncovered plain or the graphics on them? The only ones they've uncovered so far have been the plain ones. Um, I'm really surprised that they've uncovered this many. Uh, obviously, there's reasons for it. You know, I was, I was kind of thinking what may be the reasons. They haven't started the cast member testing yet, so it's not for that. Again, they can open the doors without uncovering the gondolas. When they unwrapped the first one, my original thought was, you know, they're, they're in there, they're doing uh, testing for temperatures. They have the sensory equipment on board. They're trying to see how hot the gondolas get. Now they've unwrapped more. So what I'm wondering is if they're they're doing maybe some sort of promos where they're uh, filming. You know, they have some, you know, four or five gondolas in a row as they're coming into the station. They're maybe doing some sort of a promo for D23 or, you know, they're gonna start running commercials and stuff. You know how Disney runs all kinds of commercials, advertisements, the Disney blog, all that stuff. So they may just be using them to, uh, you know, to get us excited. They'll put some, some promo stuff out there so they want to have them unwrapped. So what time is it? Nine o'clock. So Illuminations is actually going off in the distance as well over the top of the bus station. It's kind of hard to see. But there, you can kind of see. See how it's getting red? That's, uh, that's part of Illuminations over there. So you're going to have Phantasmic going off here. You could have the the Star Wars fireworks going off. You could have Illuminations going off all from this vantage point, from these gondolas here. That's worth, I mean, that's worth the price of admission right there. You know, get get on the gondola, 8.55-ish. Uh, that, that would even be too early. About 8.58, 8.59, you want to be on one of these gondolas coming in, and you're going to see some pretty, pretty cool stuff. I mean, you, you can see, you'll see right over top of these bus stations, you can see right into the Epcot. International Gateway, same thing, going right to the back there. Brian, glad to hear that you're all right. Thanks for all the Skyliner news. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, you, you gotta kind of laugh at it. Uh, look, everything's going off, man, Fantasmic. Now you got the, the fireworks here going off. I told you guys, nine o'clock, you're gonna wanna be on these uh, these Skyliners coming in. This is unreal. Look, you can have the Disney experience standing on the walkway outside of Disney and you can look all around and there's just amazing stuff going on all around you here. Unfortunately, it's freezing and this wind is really starting to blow. So look, the wind is actually blowing pretty hard and the gondola is just swaying a little bit from side to side. So these are very, very stable. Joe, welcome back, my friend. I was kind of getting clued in on what was happening. I, I do apologize. Joe, you're very much appreciated here. You know that very, very much. Thank you so much for all your generosity. You know, nobody should say any anything to anybody. If, if somebody wants to support and be supportive in any way, shape, or form, be it money or just kind words or anything, it's always appreciated here. You're always welcome here. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I don't want any negative stuff here. You guys know that. Uh, I'm not a negative person. I don't feel that other people should be negative as well. You know, you can have opinions about things coming to Disney or, you know, negative opinions on what you like and things like that. But we are always positive about people, always positive about cast members. And we try to have a positive experience here. So thank you very, very much for everything that you do, especially you, Joe. Uh, you've always been very, very supportive. Thank you. Robbie, fireworks on the Disneyland Skyway was so awesome. This will be bring, bring back a lot of those memories. Uh, make a grown man tear up. Absolutely, man. Robbie should know better than anybody with the uh, the Skyway. Again, you guys have heard me tell this story all the time. Von Roll did the Skyway at Disneyland and at Disney World. Uh, so there's a ton of history. Beautiful, beautiful things that happened inside Disneyland and at Disney World with the, uh, the Skyway. And now these are all going to be brand new memories for another generation and many generations to come with the Skyliner. That's how we have to look at this as a very positive thing. I 
I love red fireworks. I love how the sky lights up at red. You know it's the dark side. Oh, check out that fire. Wayne, hello from uh, Tucson. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. Eric, definitely it would be cool to see all of the all of the up close in person. I have uh, friends that work at Disney, so I'll be curious if any of them will be part of the cast member testing. If they are, definitely let us know. If anybody, you know, tests on here, any cast members or anything, please, please come on here and share share that with us and say, hey, you know, it's smooth. You know, we do have one insider that's already ridden it that uh, works on the system, says it absolutely rides like butter. It's gorgeous. It's a smooth ride. It's going to be beautiful. Um, one of the smoothest, best, you know, systems that Doppelmeyer has done. So, again, this is going to be premier. Disney is going to make this premier. This is just a monster when it comes to mono cables and lifts. Um, you know, the, the weight that these things can handle, the speed, they're pushing the speeds on this even faster than I even thought it was too. In emergency situations, these gondolas are going to be unloaded quickly. They were, you know, they were doing testing over at the Caribbean Beach the other day. That was just kind of a normal unloading process. Um, in emergency situations, you know, flash lightning storms and stuff like that, these things can unload very, very quickly, even quicker, quicker than we saw on that Caribbean Beach video that I did the other day. Again, the first rule here at Disney is always safety. So safety becomes from before everything else. They want guests to be happy. They want guests to have a good time. But more than anything, they want their guests to be safe here. Tim, at Art of Animation, uh, been looking for me. Um, when was I there last? I was just there a day or two ago. You know, I, I was there watching for like two hours, hoping that they moved the gondolas because I was shooting all kinds of cool shots from like, you know, above and stuff like that. But again, they're just doing these these stationary load tests right now. It's, I don't want to say it's it's boring because this is all awesome, but um, it was it was kind of a little boring. They're just kind of there. They're not doing much. Uh, but I was there. Um, email me, Rob at uh, passporttheparks.com. Let me know how long you're going to be here, and maybe you know I'll try to let you know where I'm going to be and and go from there. Crazy Domo, so faster than 15 miles an hour. Again, the Doppelmeyer D-Line, uh, seven meters a second, which is about 15 and a half miles an hour. Will they run that at 15 miles an hour all the time? No, your average speed is probably gonna be probably between 12 and 14, maybe 13 miles an hour. Uh, that's kind of what we've been seeing. 15 is your max, you know, normal running speed is what it's capable of. Uh, Disney in emergency situations is pushing that speed even faster than that. You know, I don't want to throw out an actual number because, you know, that's, it, it's, they can go faster than 15 in an emergency situation. Robbie, yes, faster than 15. There you go. Robbie, for the Skyliner technical information, uh, absolutely hit up uh, Von Roll. VR 101 Skyrise and the Disneyland Skyway on Facebook. Yeah, guys, I tell you, you go there all the time. Robbie has a lot of cool stuff over there. Uh, wealth of information. Hit him up. Send him a message as well. You got technical questions. He can answer all those. You know, we try to answer a lot of stuff here. Uh, sometimes I'm just kind of babbling stuff out from what I, uh, you know, what I hear and things like that. But you want you want the uh, specifics on things. Robbie would definitely be helpful uh, with that. See Wayne, I want to be. I want to head to Anaheim the week before Galaxy's Edge opens for a possible soft rope, uh, soft opening. I canceled my WDW uh, reservations at the end of August. Uh, it was opening day at Epcot. Uh, I'm going to try to get before Galaxy's Edge opens at uh, in Anaheim. Well, absolutely. Let us know how that is. If you do get out there, uh, if you get a first look at any of that stuff, please let us know. Chris, imagine being one of, uh, imagine being on one having, I'm sorry, some, the way these comments come in, they're, they're all broken up sometimes, it's hard to read, I'm sorry. I want to uh, have a way of the destination and it just accelerates. Sorry, I, I think that kind of got broken up, but I don't think I'm reading that right, my friend. Mike, hey Rob, do you know uh, what you need to do to get a police radar speed gun and when they're testing, see how fast they uh, go each way? 
Uh, yeah, that might be an investment I, I really don't want to go out and do, but that's a good idea. I wonder if they do, are there apps out there that you can do uh, like radars on your, on your phone? I'll have to look at that. Maybe I can actually do a, a, a radar test on it. So we can actually put this to rest with a third party Android app. That's scientific, isn't it? Stephanie, any more uh, improvements at Caribbean Beach? Uh, I actually went over to Caribbean Beach, but we had an incident on the way over there, so I didn't spend a whole lot of time over there, unfortunately. Uh, I'll get over there during the day sometime. I know that Jamaica is pretty well put back together, and now Aruba is the one that's going through all of the, um, the uh, landscaping where they have everything kind of tore up. They're doing pipe work and electro electrical stuff in the ground and all that. So Aruba is the one that you might want to avoid for the next month or so. But other than that, Trinidad, Barbados, uh, Martinique, uh, all really, really beautiful still. See, Trey, is it Tress or Trey? Um, maybe Trey. Uh, just joined the video. Thank you for being here. Uh, Trey, that is uh, the fireworks. See them right there in the background. We were just talking about that probably before you got here. The amazing views that you would have coming in on the skyline. You're going to see these fireworks. Over to our right, you're going to see the uh, Illuminations fireworks. You're going to see Fantasmic. You're going to see the Tower of Terror lit up in the background there. It's definitely going to be worth the price of admission to ride the Skyliner over here right around 9 o'clock or so when all this stuff happens. Greg, I uh, got my D23 membership yesterday and just got my tickets for the D23. Looking forward to uh, the convention in August and doing Walt's uh, footsteps for you uh, at Disneyland. Man, when you're over there, you definitely got to get us some inside information when you're over there, my friend. You got to get video and pictures and share them with us. That would be so, so awesome if you were to do that. Uh, but that's amazing that you get to go. Um, that's definitely a dream. Maybe in the future you get to go. But there's, there's going to be some really, really cool announcements coming out of there. I promise you that. Some really, really cool stuff happening with this uh, the Skyliner as well. Uh, some advancements, uh, things that they're going to announce uh, happening on Disney property. Things that you're really, really not assuming that they would actually do may, uh, may come true here in the near future. Mickey Moose, uh, this is the first live stream I've been able to catch. Well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate that. You hear the booms in the background. That's actually illuminations. You can see the smoke just kind of clearing the background here. But again, there's, there's your gondola right there. There's illuminations. Uh, right here is Fantasmic. And right as you're coming into the station, you're going to see the uh, Star Wars fireworks as well coming in. So very, very cool. David, just booked my hotel room for August 29th and also for December. Uh, nice to make sure that I would catch my first glimpse of Walt Disney World Star Wars on the opening dates. Very, very awesome. Mr. Cruise Fever, uh, hello Mickey Moose. Everybody's welcome to Mickey Moose on first time. James, uh, hey from England, visiting in October, staying at Coronado Springs. Uh, when are you doing your next live stream from there? Probably, maybe this week, maybe next week. I will definitely get over there. I always like to do about once a month over there. The, uh, the tower is looking so, so beautiful over there. They've actually started the pillars on the other side. So pillars are on both sides of the tower now. Uh, it's pretty much all lit up at night. All the rooms are lit up at night. Uh, it looks pretty amazing. That's going to be another one that's going to be pretty shocking when that, when that is done. Coronado Springs is going to be a very, very premier place to go. PTR, it really, uh, it's really neat. At night, the hall rope is almost invisible. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, as you look down, it's just kind of these ghost gondolas that are just hanging down in the distance down there. That's why I think, especially if they do, if they do light up, I really, fingers crossed that they have lighting packages on the outside. That just the, the views, I don't know what to show you guys. There's fireworks behind me, there's the gondolas in front of me. I'm like running around in circles here, just trying to show you everything that's happening. Oh, that's so cool. Let's 
see the spotlights up in the clouds? I can actually see these spotlights from my house. They've really opened up this parking lot over here too. A lot of this was fenced off um, previously and they've opened up a lot of this now. So again, little small increments, they keep doing little things here and there, little things with the, the Skyliner, little things with the parking lots, the bus stations, all these little details that they're finally getting done, um, you know, getting ready for Galaxy's Edge. Greg, I will definitely uh, email you and give you all the exclusive at D23 and uh, we'll share pics. That would be awesome. Very, very cool. Mr. Cruise Fever, I hope they will keep the studios open until 10 or 11, like the Magic Kingdom. Uh, you know, they could, you know, depending on the, the lineup, if they, if they, with Galaxy's Edge and stuff, they might want to extend the hours a little bit. Just for the sheer amount of people, you know, it may take, you know, that long just to get uh, people to, to come in and ride the ride. You spend a ticket, you know, hopefully, you know, if you buy a ticket, you'll be able to get on that smuggler's run. You know, we're all going to have to stand in line. There's going to be no fast passes. Uh, in the beginning so it's just going to be you know wait your turn hopefully there'll be enough time in the day to get all these people through Bennett, I thought there was lighting on the uh, the comm wires as well as the cabins. You know, I haven't seen any lighting. I've seen I've seen what looked like lighting on the towers themselves. But I'm hey vlogging, awesome! Hey, yes, woo -hoo. Go vloggers! Woo -hoo. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty well convinced that it was sun glare because each time it's been extremely sunny and as I get close up to these towers and I've, I've looked at different different uh, pictures I've taken and stuff close ups, I cannot find anywhere that there's actual physical lighting on the towers itself. So it's reflecting, what I think it is, it's reflecting off the first set of sheaves, the wheels, the, um, you know, the, the shiny metal that's actually in the wheels, that's what the reflections were. Now that the haul ropes are actually in there, I haven't seen that since. This was prior to the haul ropes going in. So it was like a sun glare that kind of looked like there were spotlights on the towers. Um, so as far as actual exterior lighting, I, I haven't seen them. Now there may be, who knows? I mean, there, there could be some sort of fiber optic stuff in here, uh, fiber optics on the, ca on the, uh, on the cabins, in the, in the cable itself. Uh, in the communications cable, you know, it's it's as good as guess as anybody's right now. Excuse you, that wind is nothing. Uh, they can operate in higher winds. Yeah, absolutely. This, again, that's what I'm trying to say is this is a fairly fairly decent wind. You know, you can see this isn't really much, but these palm trees before they were really pushing in, and the uh, the gondolas were just you know just kind of swaying a little bit to the left and right. So these can definitely operate in some heavy winds. Deb, I'm wondering what they'll do when a thunderstorm comes in. Uh, just your average storm, you're gonna be able to operate. It's, it's when you have the severe lightning, it's when you have severe winds, <clears throat> um, that's, when the, that's when the system would have to be shut down. In a lot of normal circumstances, this thing is gonna be running in heavy rains, um, in thunder, um, in, in heavier winds, you're gonna still be able to operate. Again, these are very sturdy. This is a very safe system. These things are built incredibly well and again safety is number one but in any case if there are you know major lightning storms and stuff coming in they're going to get the gondolas down and again you can evacuate these gondolas quickly if you need to we were just talking about that about the the extra speed that disney is putting into these gondolas that you can actually remove these gondolas from the rope uh very very quickly and there's all kinds of sensory equipment there's weather sensory equipment that's actually on the top of the towers uh, that can detect when things like that are happening uh, there's all kinds of, you know, there's computer sense, there's sensory equipment that they use. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, safety, safety, safety. These things are going to operate in a lot of, a lot of heavy conditions, but very, very extreme conditions. You know, they'll have a, they'll have a cutoff that says this is what we need to shut it down. These are the parameters that we can't operate it in, and, and they'll have procedures in place to, uh, to take care of that.
Hey, Robbie, Modeling Disney, did they come on? There you go. Welcome, Modeling Disney. We were just talking about, uh, people were asking about um, like logo shirts and stuff like that. And I said, you know, I'm gonna have like a logo shirt, t-shirt coming out. But I said, Modeling Disney is putting together such, such, such an awesome shirt that is gonna come out that it's gonna knock people's socks off. You know, people were saying, oh, I just, you know, just a logo would be cool. But what Modeling Disney has put together, trust me guys, you guys are gonna be blown away by how cool these shirts are. Just in general, not just that it's a Passport to the Park shirt, but it's just such a cool shirt. So I cannot wait uh, till that's done. So that's Modeling Disney on here. You're definitely gonna be hearing a lot more uh, about him as well. Uh, he does a lot of cool 3D blueprints and stuff like that. So uh, I'll, I'll definitely uh, give more information about, uh, about him as well. David, do you think the character wraps or, uh, let's see, do you think the character wraps or murals that are on the cars of the gondolas will obstruct our view from the look out of the windows and taking pictures with our cameras? Uh, you know, I'm, it could, I'm assuming it's kind of like a, like a wrap that you would have like on the buses, like the Disney buses have. So it'll be like that darkened sort of scenario. But a lot of the wraps don't actually go like all the way around the window. So like a lot of it is just like Mickey and Minnie Mouse just kind of, where, where's my hand? It's just kind of like hanging over like the, the, the ledge of the window. So it's not blocking your entire view outside of the window. And then like on the sides, on the doors, uh, most of the time the characters aren't there. They're, they're mainly on the, you know, on the, the larger part of the area here. So it's not gonna obstruct all your view. And you, you should be able to look out just like you would in the Disney bus. It'll just make it a little darker. But again, that'll help with sun glare coming in. But that's, you know, that's, again, a question until physically inside one of the gondolas. I can't say yes or no because th this is new as well. You know, there's not, there's not another character-wrapped Omega-4 gondola out there that has these Disney characters on it. So there's nothing to, to compare that to. It's just something we're going to have to wait and see. Greg, that one is uh, a burnt or orange color. Is a burnt or orange color. Uh, which one? This one? Yeah, the one that's hanging over there. I call it like a mustard color. There's like a, a neon yellow one that's actually in the... Hey! It's our year, man. Super Bowl. Woo! Browns fans. <laughs> All right, everybody's coming out now from the fireworks. Which I probably should have pre-thought this. Now I'm going to have to wait in the crowds before I can even drive out of here. It's actually very nice getting out of here now. The, the way Disney has remodeled the entire parking lot, uh, the traffic flow is really nice. Before, you would have to exit out onto Buena Vista Drive, which is over here, and there was a traffic light, and you'd have to wait, and the traffic would back up forever. But now, you actually exit out onto Osceola Drive, which is Osceola Parkway, which is on the other side, and it's a very smooth flow of traffic. There's no traffic lights, and you're out onto like a four-lane highway. So it moves a lot faster getting out of here. So definitely a, definitely a plus in, in Disney's corner for that. Now the buses are the only ones that use the, uh, the Buena Vista, the Buena Vista, Buena Vista exit anymore. See Dawn, I will be there Saturday staying at Boardwalk Inn. Great job. We got the whole crowd singing here. Like saying country road. Try to stay over to the side here a little bit because crowds are definitely getting a little thicker. Uh, let's see, Crazy Domo Rob said those were already painted. Somebody asking about the, the painted towers probably over at International Gateway. Those were put up with that go away green. Those were actually installed with that color. Again, they won't, uh, they won't, if they do paint any of the towers, they won't do it until after all the load testing is done because they have to look for structural integrity, any cracks. Uh, they'll use x-ray and they'll actually x-ray the towers to make sure that everything is uh, intact. There's no damage to any of the towers after all these load tests. So after all that is done, could they go and maybe paint the ones inside the uh, the Caribbean beach? Uh, could be possible at that point, but uh, I wouldn't see it uh, any time prior to that. But again, Disney 
does things that I'm like, oh, I don't know why they did that, and they could they could be over there painting the tower right now. Who knows? But in theory, that's what should be happening. You know, there there's different stages to this, and we're seeing the different stages. We saw, you know, speed testing, stop testing, uh, the load testing with the lines moving. Now we're seeing these load tests with the the lines in stationary. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of work inside the stations now as these are, are stationary. You know, they're checking for stra stress on the um, on the bowl wheels, um, any of the concrete, anything that could possibly go wrong, this is the time that they're trying to figure all that out. Once they're confident with that, then they'll start putting more bodies on, you know, extra cast members and things like that. And then once that is through, then, uh, you know, the state of Florida actually has to come in and, and clear this and say, hey, you know, this is, this is safe. We think this is ready to operate. So there's a lot of different stages, a lot of different steps that they have to go through to make sure that they can even open this. But they are really, really moving along. They're, they're doing a great job here. Um, I can definitely see this opening absolutely by, by mid to late summer. Andrew, I'm sitting on the bench. Which bench? Do I see you? There's a lot of people here. Which bench? <laughs> Ski dude, uh, yes, the uh, control system will auto stop the haul rope if the winds exceed 40 miles an hour. Uh, that technically has existed for decades. There you go. Like I said, there are certain parameters, and again, the, the sensory equipment is up there, and this is very, very computerized. You can actually see in that little uh, video that Disney put out where they show the gondolas inside the station and all that, uh, you can actually see the, the computers that they're using. Each gondola uh, has on it, and they can, they can register and they can read everything that's going on with this entire system and it can shut down at any given time for any reason. Again, safety. We always got to think safety, safety, safety. That's what Disney's best known for. Melissa Gray, I can't believe how quickly everything is moving. Yeah, this is why. So this is a perfect example. This is why the Skyliner is going to be so necessary here. You see all these people coming out. These are massive crowds of people coming out. So where are they all going? They're all going down to the bus stops and they're all gonna sit there and wait for buses. So large groups of people, these things fill up, you know, thousands of people are coming up, they're trying to get on these buses. So what's gonna happen is these gondolas are gonna be bam, 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 moving, moving, moving. And all these people are gonna be walking through these line queues, just like the people mover. It's gonna be constantly moving. You're gonna see these gondolas one at a time coming out, 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 out. And they're gonna move a lot of these people in a very short amount of time out of, uh, out of Hollywood Studios. So you're going to have the parking lot, you're going to have the friendship boats, you're going to have the Skyliner, you're going to have the buses, you're going to have all these different modes of transportation to get these people out of here. Because this is nothing. This is a cold night on a Wednesday at Hollywood Studios with, you know, not a whole lot of stuff open in here. Star Wars is going to massively increase this uh, attendance as well. And it's going to be the summer. There's going to be no school. It's going to be, it's going to be nuts. But you see how many people are here just on a very, very cold night out on Wednesday. Bennett, I see two uncovered cam uh, cabins. Look at the station. Yeah, there's actually about uh, six of them. There's there's actually more that are. I don't want to try to get too caught up in these crowds here. But there's like there's like four, maybe five of them actually in a row inside the station. There's the uh, the mustard one that's here, and then. There's actually, um, somebody is waving here again, there's actually another yellow one that's way down the line as well. So I'm, I'm assuming there's like six, maybe five, five to seven gondolas are actually uncovered. None of the character gondolas, which is a good thing. I don't want to see any of the characters uncovered until, until the final day, you know, until we're ready to go. Mouse Fam 1, I saw Fresh Baked WDW use some of your video for the construction update. Oh, did they really? Fresh Baked WDW, I'll have to check that out. I know it was on uh, uh, the DSNY uh, newscast, which I, I know you guys all watch that. I mean, he's, uh, he's amazing. He does some amazing updates, but he used a lot of my footage uh, for Pop and Art and uh, Caribbean. Did a really great job. I love watching him. So definitely check out his videos and check out that video. Uh, you see a ton of my footage in there.
There's actually a couple, uh, couple of crews up inside working on, uh, on this station as well. So again, there's, there's the little details that's going on. Sometimes we can't see it. We're not seeing things move, but uh, they're constantly doing stuff. They're constantly checking. You know, the crews are, are here to uh, ensure that this thing can be, excuse me, be fully operational and ready to go, so. Melissa, opening day of Galaxy's Edge will be scary. Yeah, but scary in a good way. I think everybody's gonna have a great time. You know, you're kind of assuming, it was with Toy Story Land was the same thing. Now you can actually see the Magic Kingdom fireworks. You guys can see that? So again, those flashes of light out there, that's actually the Magic Kingdom's fireworks. So a, another view that you're gonna be able to see, it's your highest point up here, and coming out of Epcot as well, when you're coming over um, you know, uh, Caribbean Beach and stuff like that, it's pretty high, and uh, Buena Vista Drive, you're gonna be able to see those Magic Kingdom fireworks really well. You can see it really glowing in the background there, right over the, uh, the top of the Swan Hotel, Swan and Dolphin. This is why Disney is so fun. I mean, you, you can just, you can stand here and just be in awe of everything that's going on. So this is all personal stuff here. This must be like Ubers and people waiting on rides. And I think I'm just gonna camp out here for a few, try to let some of these crowds dwindle down a little bit. And then I will try to get myself out of here as well. Ski Dude, how is Saratoga Springs lately? Um, well, I haven't actually walked through it lately. I did the walk through there a while back, and I love it there. Um, definitely one of my favorite resorts. It's very cool. Uh, I'll try to do a, a whole live walk through. I want to do uh, Oak Key West there as well, and the tree houses. Uh, I've never actually walked through the tree houses. I've been back there a couple times, but uh, I haven't actually walked through to see, uh, so that'd be very unfamiliar for me back there. I'd love to see it. See, peso music. Uh, I saw the gondolas yesterday while driving through after being at Epcot. Very exciting. Isn't it? It's pretty amazing. Like I said, it's cool to see it on camera here, but until you're actually here and you really see them live and in person, and especially when you're standing here and it's, it's right over your head and you see just how cool it is and how close it is to you. I mean, literally you could feel like you could just jump up and, and touch that. If you're LeBron James, I guess you could do it, but um, they're just so close to you. And how close they are to the water at, um, at Hourglass Lake. It's just, uh, it's pretty incredible to, to experience once you actually do get here. Let's see here, uh, super chat from, uh, uh, I don't know how to say this name. Type in your name for your actual name for me. It's uh, K-T-H-O-M-P-K-M-K-E. Uh, I don't I can't even say that, my friend, but thank you so much for the super chat. Always appreciated. Uh, I'm trying to make out what that might be. I, it's probably initials for something, or it's, I'm gonna, you're gonna tell me and it's gonna be silly and uh, I'm gonna feel stupid because I can't see it, but tell me what your name is so I can actually, absolutely uh, thank you for that. Greg, I'm so ready to ride the Skyliner. I am too, my friend. Cannot wait. Modeling Disney, do we know when the uh, Riviera is opening November? Uh, I thought that's the last I heard was supposed to be like the end of the year in the fall. I could be mistaken. I haven't followed closely with that as of late. Um, but, you know, that doesn't necessarily have to be open. The hotel itself does not have to be open for the Skyliner to be open. You just have to be able to get through the station. You don't have to physically stop there. So, you know, they can open it. They can open that line without actually opening the hotel, you know, to, to let guests in and out. Resort, hotel, I don't know what we should call it, but. Touring the Galaxy, uh, what area are you at? I'm coming out of Hollywood. I'm actually standing right underneath the, uh, the first set of the gondolas here at the uh, Skyliner station. You can see it right here. So this is the mass amounts of crowds right between the Skyliner and the buses. Let's 
CTM123, yee! <laughs> That's an awesome word. Doomsday Channel, Disney World, uh, having, uh, let's see, may have the experience for Star Wars, Level of, crowds, uh, level of crowds for Pandora and Toy Story Land, but Disneyland hasn't had anything. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, actually, Joe, getting late, good night. Thank you again for being here, Joe. Always appreciate it, my friend. You know you are always welcome here, and I, you know I personally appreciate your generosity. Um, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, Joe. But uh, that is an awesome point, Doomsday Channel. Um, Disneyland has not experienced a massive uh, opening like they are going to have for Star Wars. They have had Toy Story, hand, Toy Story Land. They've had the uh, new fantasy land here. Um, they've had Pandora, a massive land over at Pandora. So they're kind of capable and they, they know how to handle the crowds. I guess you could say that Cars Land would have been kind of comparable to that. But Disneyland, it's a much smaller space, much smaller area as well. So, you know, I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to handle that. I mean, you know, it's Disney. They're going to have their, their procedures in place, and they're going to handle it just fine. But that's a, that's a good point. Definitely a, definitely a different situation than it is here than it is in Disneyland. See, Jason, when does the Skyliner open? I'm there June 1st through the 8th. Uh, you know that we've been debating that for, for a while because of Galaxy's Edge. Disney, Disney had originally announced the fall, but again, because of the fact that, uh, you know, Galaxy's Edge is opening on the 29th now, the Skyliner, I think they're definitely going to want to get that open prior. June might be uh, stretching it a little bit, so I'm thinking definitely late or early August would probably be our best bet. Uh, you could have some soft openings through the summer, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm, I'm pretty confident, though, that they are going to definitely get it open prior to Galaxy's Edge. Hey, how, going, how are you? What's your name? Dana, how are you? Dana, good, how are you? Can I put you on camera? Or? Yes. Sure. You got, hey, up, this guys? is Dana, everybody. How's it going, everybody? Awesome, thank you for watching, appreciate it. Over here, filming this again, aren't you? Yeah, oh yeah, man, I'm always here checking this out. Best hey, guys, yep. how are you? Can I, I put you? I just want to interrupt. But no, that's all, right. that's all right, that's all right. How are you? Good. Good. I'm live now, you guys probably can see well, that, yep. so. Awesome. <laughs> so you can say hi to the whole world, everybody's on. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, guys, always appreciate it. We were hoping to see him run a little bit ourselves. Well, they're actually, this is just a stationary load test. So they, they, they don't run it right now. They're just basically letting it hang and they're testing it for, for stress in the towers and things like that and weight. And um, so this is just part of the process. It's kind of boring right now. It's cool to see, but it's a little boring. But is Touch and Move in at all earlier? Uh, no, they really didn't move. They'll, they'll move them out and then they'll just kind of park them and they'll leave them out all night. Okay. So sure. yeah, they'll just, they'll leave them hang and then they'll pull them in in the morning and then they'll do it all again. So okay. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Nice to meet you, though. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're always over here. I'm like, <laughs> fascinated by it. I'm excited for yeah, it. Yeah, I love it. It's just cool, man. It's. I'm not excited that it's not going to have any air conditioning. In it. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people are, are worried about that. But again, if you look, you can see the, the vents yeah. are there. They're tinted, so you're not going to have sun glare in there. There's going to be a lot of ventilation coming through. You've seen how fast they move. Oh, yeah, those things kick down the road. I'm yeah, like, so they... They're moving fast, you're gonna have a lot of airflow. There's power on board, you could even have maybe some fans in there. Right. So, and again, this is gonna be less than two minutes getting from here over to Caribbean Beach. Yeah. So you're not gonna be on there that long. To, it's not gonna be a sweat box. So, I mean, take it for what it is, it's amazing. You know, I was actually thinking about that too. You ride, say you take the boat from, uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, from Magic Kingdom over to Polynesian. It's oh, the yeah. open air boat. Oh, yeah. There's no air conditioning on that boat. Right. Does anybody complain, oh, those boats are stupid because they don't have air conditioning. Right. You know, it's just something for people to, to complain about, and right. don't let it don't let it bother you. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's awesome, man. Fun. Yeah. I'm excited for it, but everybody's gonna be over here trying to film it on the first day it opens. Yeah, you know, I'm here every day, so yeah, it's just fun. So do you not go? Do you not go into the parks any? Or uh, I do. You know, yeah. I just spend a lot of time out here. I go into the parks every once in a while. Usually, like when my daughter's with me, we'll we'll tool around the parks and have some fun. Okay. But yeah. um, most of the time, I'm just kind of outside. Yeah, because sometimes I join in and I've never seen you in the park before. I've seen you one time, you were riding the monorail and I stopped yeah. the first time and said, hey. You were like, hey, it's Word of Galaxy, but you're always out there. I was like, I don't know if he doesn't have passes. Or no, something. I do. I just, uh, this just fascinates me out here. I mean, there's so many yeah. people that do stuff in the parks yeah. and all that. You can see that. Right. Um, right. You know, I, I, this is my thing. I just like it out right. here and you it's like just kind of cool to me, yeah. so. You, but I will, I will go into the parks more now, just for yeah. you. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I will stop filming the Skyliner <laughs> no, right here. He told me to stop filming the Skyliner 
in the going up. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Uh, it feels good out, doesn't it? Uh, this is kind of cold for me, actually. What? I'm, yeah, I'm no cold. Way. Do you, are you from here? Or? I'm originally from North Carolina. Okay. Do you live here now? Or? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I think this is kind of cold. I'm a little nah, chilly. I, mean, I had a bunch <laughs> of people. They were like, oh, are you cold? I was like, no, let me turn the camera around. I got shorts, t shirts on. I'm like, oh my gosh. Usually, I do. I'm from Ohio. I grew up on Lake Erie, so right. I was used to the cold. I'd wear shorts in the winter. Right. But oh, my battery power is about done. Um, but now that, now that I moved down here, I get cold. I'm like jackets all the time and all that. Right. So actually, give me one second here. Actually, guys, uh, I'm down to about 5% here. So. Let me, uh, let me turn you around here. Let me say, uh, come on, my button never works on this thing. So I'm losing my power. Uh, I've, I, my external battery supply is down, so I'm running out of power, so I don't want to lose you guys. Thank you again for being here so much. Thank you again for all the super chats. Thank you for my new uh, pal here. Awesome, hey thank guys. you so much for watching. Um, and I will definitely be back uh, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. I'll be back doing a lot of cool stuff. We'll see again what they're gonna do with the, uh, with the gondolas, if they start moving anymore. Fingers crossed we'll start doing stuff over to, uh, to Epcot as well. We'll see how that goes. But uh, stay tuned. You know we'll have a lot of fun. And I appreciate all the support uh, from earlier as well on that, uh, that magical bus ride. And um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Good night, guys.